right, so let's compare Wellington versus Wellesley versus the S&P 500 in two different time frames. And then we're going to, without taking money out, just to see the growth. And then we're going to compare them to uh, uh, when we're taking money out as well. I think that'll be interesting. I, I, man, for the last three hours, I've been messing around. Stay tuned to video I do tomorrow, which we're going to even slice and dice it up even more, which I think will be even, even more dramatic. But I just want to start with a well linked in using the proxies of the S&P 500 as well as the Wells Lee. So let's take a look. So right here, we're going back from 2000 to 2021. We're putting 100,000 all three, all right? And we're not, uh, no rebalancing, you nothing to rebalance to. We're not taking any income. We're just putting 100,000 bucks in and we're gonna see what we're looking at. After 21 uh, years, basically, the Wellington is at a compounded annual growth rate of 8.41. Wellesley, 7.58. Uh, S&P 500, 7%. And so if we see here at the end of the time frame, well Wellington is up to 567. Wellesley 480, S&P 500 is 431, all right? So partly the reason for that, well, because the first uh, 10 years of the cycle were horrible, horrible for, especially for the S&P 500. So let's go to the end of 2000, or the beginning of 2009 uh, to the end, and the S&P 500, I imagine, uh, smoked both. Let's take a look, and we can come back to the compound. Yeah, look at that. So the compounded annual growth rate for Wellington is 11%, Wellesley 8.74%. S&P 500, 15 and a half. So you can see here, S&P 500 is worth 605,000 now, uh, more than double that of the uh, Wellesley, Wellesley, which is 284. So Wellesley is only at 284, S&P 500 is at 600, and Wellington is at 382. So you can see in a growth mode, S&P 500 does better. So essentially what this is telling me, I, well, it did better, I shouldn't say does. This tells me right here, I hope you got your growth in because uh, who knows where we're going in the next 10 years. It's going to be uh, 1990s repeated. So basically, we have the 1982 to 1990 cycle, which is up like we've had the last eight years. Could it be a 1990s? Because 1990s kicked butt took names too. Or could it be a 2000 repeated? I don't know. So let's. Uh, so we'll see. But at the end of the day, if you're trying to get growth, S and P 500 100 percent is uh, will, has proven to be historically much much better because it doesn't have any bonds. It's not that difficult to comprehend. But let's start taking money out. All right. So let's go back to 2000, and here we're going to start by. I want to start with uh, cash flows. We're going to draw a fixed amount, at six thousand dollars a year, and notice. Inflation adjusted. Yes, we are going to adjust it for inflation. Everyone's like, you didn't adjust for inflation. I am adjusting for inflation. A dust contribution of withdrawal amount for inflation. So we are adjusting it with inflation. I just, I, I just wish people would watch the video for the comment. So we're at the two, what, the 205 mark or so, 305 mark. That's where we're adjusting for inflation. So if anyone says, you didn't adjust for inflation, please say, look at three of three minute memo. All right, so now we're going to go down here to annualized portfolios, and I think we got to 2,000. Yeah, so let's take a look. All right, so compounded annual growth rate here for the Wellington was negative, negative 0.45. Wellesley had a positive 1.21, and the S&P 500 ran out of money. So the S&P 500 ran out of money in 2013. Uh, Wellington had 94,000, and the uh, uh, Wellesley had 116. So well, so after, uh, what was this for? 2021. Oh, it only goes to 2013 because that's when the S&P 500 ran out. Hmm. I, want, I want to keep going. Oh, it's a 2012. Why well, I want to do 2012. Yeah. Let's see here. Oh, man, it only goes to 2013. All right, so let's, uh, that's where that stops. You thought that, I didn't do that before. That's strange. All right, so let's go to, We'll uh, zero out the S&P 500 because it didn't do that before where it uh, stopped because one of them ran out of money. So let's just do zero here so we can get rid of the S&P 500. All right. So now we're taking 6% out of the Wellington. And it uh, looks like this ran out of money in 2000. No, it didn't. I don't say this. Okay, got rid of that. All right, good. So Wellington taking 6% a year. At the end of 2020, right now, it's still got 119 in there. So even though we were down to $73,000, we've grown back to 119. So we're taking six, what is it, 6,000 a year? 
Six thousand a year adjusted for inflation. Look at that, man. I don't know. That seems pretty good to me. I'm not gonna lie to you. That seems pretty good to me. And that's with a pretty significant drop off. We had 125 September 27th. We fell all the way down to uh, 72 in February 2009. Um, so 2007 to 2009, we fell uh, about, you know, well, not quite half, but a pretty significant amount. The drawdown here was 41%. Wellesley, the drawdown, that's with taking money out, 6%, 6,000 a year. But look, we're right back in 120. So we, <laughs> We've, we've actually got positive returns, compounded annual growth rate. With the money we're taking out, we are making money, making money. That's, uh, that's pretty impressive, if you ask me. So if we go to 2009, let's take a look. Uh, 2001 to 2009, again, Wellington is at, uh, it fell to 72, all the way to 93. I mean, that's, that ain't so bad, man. That's taking five or 6,000 year adjusted for inflation. What if we didn't adjust it for inflation? What if we did kind of like what I call the reverse RMD, where you're over, you're taking more out of the front end. And because, you know, we know your expenditures are going to go down as you age. So essentially, you're, uh, it's almost like you're creating your own annuity without a guarantee, if that makes sense. So we're going to take 75. A uh, hundred a, a year, a, a seven point five percent, and we're and we're not adjusting for inflation. And let's see how long that lasts. Oh wow! Wellington's at eighty four thousand. Wellesley's at ninety eight. That's at seventy five hundred a year, not adjusted for inflation. Huh. Let's go to two thousand twenty one. Look at that, man. They're both basically breaking even, Stephen. And that's not adjusting for inflation. So you were able to take 7500 bucks a year out because, again, the front part of your retirement is where you'll be partying like it's 1999. I, I just I don't know how you overlook that. So you say, well, the bond rates have gone down. Ooh, that's what I was going to show you. So hold on a second. And so the bond rates going down mean the price of bonds go up. Well, let's take a look what happened in the... Uh, 1966 to 1982. Hang tight. So here we're using a spreadsheet from my man Daniel Kulabert over at 55e.co. And this is the bucket uh, the bucket uh, strategy sheet I'm using, which you can buy off him for uh, a very nominal fee, 25 or 35 bucks or something. All right. So what we're going to do is we've got Wellington in here. We've got $100,000 in there. We're going to take 5000 year adjusted for inflation. We're going to start in 1966. And we're going to show you what the 10-year treasury rates are doing because rates were going up. Because remember, everyone says, oh, the only reason you were so successful in bonds because the rates were going down. And I don't know that to be true. So anyway, so here are the rates. 66 is 4.6. 66, 7, 8, 9, 70, 7.8. Uh, 75 was 7. Uh, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80 was 8, 81, 82, 83. So the rates are going up. All right, so let's take a gander, shall we? what the Wellington did at 5% a year uh, in 1966. And this is just the Wellington. All right, so here you got, uh, got 100,000 bucks in there. And by the time 1981 ran uh, around, you were, you were run out of money. You ran out of money. There's, there's no hope for you, man. You're done. Because you had those uh, bad returns in the 66. So basically that wipes out that, that wiped out that. These three get wiped out by that. And then uh, you're basically down to, you know, nothing by the time you're, uh, <laughs> by the time 1975 rolls around. So let's just have inflation adjusted, though. Let's do, what do we, what do we got here? We got 7,500. Let's do 7,500 fixed. Let's see what that does. And here you run out of money in 1977, right? Let's make sure that's fixed. Do I got right, inflation. I don't want inflation adjustment fixed. There we go. All right. Looks like we are good. And you still run out of money in uh, 1982. So that lasts 16 years right there. So basically, uh, let's do 6,000. Let's do 6,000. 
Ah, look at that. 6,000. And I wrote about this in my book on Wellington, by the way. 6,000 did just fine. Wellington, you can see we're taking 6,000 a year without adjusting for inflation. And by the time 1994 rolls around, we're at $88,000. So, yeah, we're fine. Let's do 6,500. And 6,500 last us until 1995. So that's 30 years, man. So 6,500 lasted us until 1995. And if we go back here, 6,500. I mean, we're, we're sitting on $170,000 at the end of 2021, 21 years later. At 6,500 flat. Isn't that interesting? Did I do 7,000? It won't be, obviously, 30 years because we ran out with uh, 6,500. 7,000 ran out in 1986, 20 years. And that's the worst mark we've ever had when it comes to inflation. And, you know, I mean, this right here, if factor in inflation, we haven't had any worse markets than this right there. Huh. Isn't that interesting? I find that to be uh, enlightening. Let's do, instead of 1966, eh, let's just start in, we'll do 1970. Because we can compare that to well uh, Wellesley Fund as well. All right, so 1970, we're going to take 7,000 a year, each and every year. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. So let's do 1969. Now that's not adjusted for inflation. That's flat. But Josh, no, because what we're saying is we're saying we're going to take a larger fixed amount because our expenditures are going to go down as we age, most likely. Uh, 1969, we kept money. That money never ran out. Until night, till two, yeah, I mean, that money never ran out, all right? Uh, 1968. So 1966 is literally probably the worst case scenario. 1968, money didn't run out, all right? That's good. 1967. And we're taking 7,000 a year out, by the way. Didn't run out. Fixed. 1960. Oops. I got what we had for 1966. Yeah, it ran out right there. 19, 20 years lasted. But if we go to 1967, I mean, look at that. It's just that one. Yeah, it's crazy. 1965. And ran out in 1985, again, 20 years. So 1965, 1966 didn't work. 64. 7,000 year fixed. And 1964 ran out in 88, so 24 years later. 1963. And ran out uh, 20, no, that's 30 years later, 1963 and 64. So 1965 and 66 is it. Because 1963 to 1996, that's 33 years. Let's try one other, 1962 to see. I mean, just what? And that's 1982. So that's uh, 1962 to 1982. And we'll just try 1961. Again, it's at 7,000 a year. Point being here is that, I mean, look, 1993. So we had the early 19s, we had three years in the 1960s where you your money ran out. It still lasted for 20 years. That's at $7,000 a year fixed without adjusting for inflation during the worst markets that we've seen when you factor in inflation, during high increasing interest rates. Then you go to, we, hell, we can even go to 1972, 1973, when the markets are getting hammered. 
And it, I mean, watch 1973. Yeah, it just, as long as your money could have lasted until 1982, you're golden. And look, it doesn't run out. 1971, that's a 7,000 fixed. I, I don't know what to tell you, man. The likelihood of you running out of money is not, let's go to 5,000. And look, if you're adjusted for inflation, yeah, it could be problematic. The problem is most likely you're going to spend less as you age. You get 5% a year out. Yeah, it stayed until 1994 from 1970. One, that's still 23 years, man. Yeah. Let's go to 1972. Because inflation is what killed us. 1972 stayed at 1995. Still 23 years. 1973. It's a 5% a year adjusted for inflation. And it lasted, 19, again, 20 years every single time. 19, we'll try 1974, the worst year. And then we'll go to 1975. I think we're at, yeah, 1973 and 74 were fine. Even though 74, we're down 17%. 1975, and we're having huge inflation. Yeah, 19, we're golden. Let's take 6% a year out, $6,000 a year adjusted for inflation without last. Sure enough, Will, let's do uh, 6,500. This is in 1975. Yep. Sure enough, Will, let's do uh, 1974. Ran out of money in 1993. 6,500 a year adjusted for inflation still lasted 20 years. During times of... Uh, uh, bond increasing interest rates going up and the price of bonds going down during the times of a uh, huge inflation during the times of the beginning of a well 73 and 74 horrific for stocks crazy crazy and we go back to the bucket thing here i mean i just if you look at it you're like all right so we know that we can took well we took 6500 a year let's adjust it for inflation just see if that worked Even adjusted for inflation, it lasted from starting from 2000 to 2020 until we have eighty-eight. Th we have seventy-nine thousand dollars at 2021. That's sixty-five hundred a year adjusted for inflation. So that's what I'm saying. You have a couple of times that it doesn't work. Nineteen what sixty-two, sixty-five, sixty-six. Uh, yeah, I just. <laughs> It's, it's just tough to now will that happen again i don't know but what could i mean literally if you think about well, i'm sure what wellington's invested in and i had a vanguard well i guess i got rid of it but let's uh we can go down here to see exposures and they got large cap growth for wellington it's not large cap growth wellington is large cap value so i'm not sure where they're getting large cap growth from it's all large cap value but here the wellington's 60 percent stocks 25 percent u.s bonds 8% international stocks, 4 5% international bonds, 2% cash. Um, anyway, so if you look at the Vanguard website, they don't show any uh, growth stocks. They show all um, all value stocks. And here's Wells Lee. Well, let's go to Wells Lee. Right here, 45% bonds, 37% U.S. stocks, 3% uh, international stocks, 10% international bonds. So what I'm going to do next time, I'm going to do S&P 500, 50-50, S&P 500, 50% S&P 500, 50% cash. I'm going to do 25% uh, cash, 75% Wellington. Yeah. And then Wellesley, we're going to compare them all. So hang tight for that because that's an interesting one right there. Um, so if you're shooting for growth, you know, your best bet is S&P 500, most likely, but that really didn't work from 2000, 2020. I mean, look at, again, let me just show you. If we're just shooting for growth, we're not going to take any money out. And let's go back and put the S&P 500 back here. I mean, on occasion, the S&P 500 smokes over the course of, I mean, this is 20-year experience. The S&P 500 is trailing. Now, over 10 years, yeah, it, it, it did better, um, significantly better. But it just goes to show you a mix of having some downside protection is hugely beneficial. So here's going back to the last 10 years. I mean, the S&P 500 smoked it. 
So the question is, is that going to happen again? Or is it worth it saying, let me back off a little bit and move more to the Wellington Fund? I think you kind of know the answer to that. I really do. All right. Love your thoughts. We'll see you.